your victory Oh, let it rise Let praise arise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him on For all creation Gotta let it out, I can't hold back my 
Hello. How you doing? You good? Good morning. Um, I don't know if you've had your breakfast yet, but I haven't and I'm absolutely starving. But what we're going to do now instead of that is have a big old dance for J-Dog. And uh, yeah, let's have fun. Good morning, welcome to North Birmingham Vineyard Online. We are so thrilled that you have chosen to join us today. Well, it's been a real exciting week for us here at North Birmingham Vineyard. Um, for those of you who managed to tune in to Glory Encounter and take part in that, it was a wonderful evening. And not least because Tony um, gave his heart to Jesus. And um, we welcome you into the family, Tony. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful moment. Our Zozo teams are praying every Monday evening and that is amazing as well. And um, yeah, it's just been... It's been a great week. It has, hasn't it? No, it's been fab. Uh, we're really excited today to have um, a guest speaker uh, called Mike Pilavacci, who's going to be sharing a little bit later in the service. Now, Mike is actually um, a family friend. Some of you will know him as the figurehead for Soul Survivor, which has had a huge impact um, in our nation for young people for a long time now. And uh, Mike grew up in a family that our church, uh, our family were connected to. And so remember him from being, um, you know, me being little and him being bigger. Um, and he's just <laughs> such a great guy. Um, you're gonna thoroughly enjoy him. Uh, my little 
little little hook in in terms of friendship and connection that Mike was actually when I celebrated my birthday back on February the 8th and the first person on my timeline to say happy birthday David so that's my little little link there he's a really great guy very generous um, in his uh, in his faith in his sharing in his uh, just inspiring just love towards the simplicity of following Jesus and you, we know you're going to love that now we're going to have a little chat for a moment about some of the goodie bags you've had and introduce this little fella um, it is our gadget guy, a three-in-one. He has a bottle opener, he has a little light, and he has a little measure. Doesn't he? He certainly yeah, does. Yeah, we've been really excited about this. It took a lot of research on the internet to do something. And on the front of it, it's got hands, face, sacred space, and a reference to Psalm 119 verses 103 to 106. And that's been a big theme that we've been developing here in our church family over um, recent weeks and months just to almost like repurpose that whole NHS instruction we've been given about looking at our hands the posture of our worship mm. uh, just simply coming to God in surrender um, our faces having a sense of um, just turning our faces towards God and and really strengthening our intimacy and relationship with him and also um, creating some sacred space which is why I shoehorn this little bit about the measure in having a rule of life creating space in your world to prioritise God. And I think we're going to listen to um, our wonderful Jane Hoy as she shares Psalm 119. It's coming from, to you from the Passion Translation, which might read a bit differently to how you've read it before. <clears throat> this is effectively a, a paraphrase. It kind of brings the psalm to life. And we just hope that you just settle into this, that you will, as she reads it shortly, just close your eyes and just, just reach into the instruction and the encouragement let it light you up today as we come into worship. Definitely. Psalm 119, verses 103 to 106. How sweet are your living promises to me. Sweeter than honey is your revelation light. For your truth is a source of my understanding not the falsehoods of those who don't know you, which I despise. Truth's shining light guides me in my choices and decisions. The revelation of your word makes my pathway clear. To live my life by your righteous rules has been my holy and lifelong commitment.
Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your ability to give us that presence through these screens, through this online medium. And we just thank you that you've not stopped whilst the world has. We thank you that in this time of separation, you've actually strategically placed each of us to become warriors for our areas, to become prayerful warriors for this nation, for this people. And I just bless all of these watchers this morning. I bless every heart that's listening with the assurance that God is with us, with the assurance that he is behind us, that he is before us, that he surrounds us and that he goes with, he goes before, that he's interested. I just bless our hearts with that this morning. Amen. So, out of that beautiful worship time, we're now going to transition and listen to Mike Pilavachi share what I hope is going to be an amazing message about what kind of church we want to be. Hello, my friends at the Vineyard, and um, uh, it's a joy and a privilege to be sharing with you uh, briefly. Uh, there are a few things that I would love to say as we're still at the beginning of 2021 when we've had a quite different and in many ways very difficult uh, 2020. And uh, what I've been thinking about and meditating on is what kind of church do we want to be as we come out of lockdown? And I pray that we will sooner rather than later. What kind of church would we love to be? And I really I'm talking about vision and values and vision and values are important. Without vision, the people perish, uh, says the proverb. And, uh, and values is simply, if vision is where we're going, values is who we are, who do we want to be while we get there, our DNA. Now, some people say you don't need to describe your DNA because your DNA is who you are. Well, you don't need to describe your DNA if you're in a physical family, but actually in a spiritual family, actually describing it, actually naming it, this is who we want to be, is part of the process of getting there. And uh, I, I think that we need to really go back to knowing who we are and why we are the way we are, and because that informs what we do. I'll try and explain as we go. Uh, we want to be, I want to suggest, first of all, Jesus-centred, biblically-based and spirit-led. Now, that's nothing new. We've always wanted to be Jesus-centred, biblically-based and spirit-led. But I believe in these days, as we come out of lockdown, to, to make it our aim, our aim to focus on Jesus, to look to Jesus, for it to be all about Jesus, for us to be first of all worshippers of, of Jesus, uh, to, to put him before everything uh, and to be biblically based. It's so, so important that everything we do is rooted in scripture, is rooted in God's word. And in these days, the temptation is coming so often for the church to um, to cut the corners on what the scripture says. We are not here to judge the Bible. The Bible is here to judge us. The Bible is here to shine a light on our hearts. We need to trust the Bible, trust God's word as his ultimate revelation of himself and also his ultimate revelation of the life he calls us to live, the best life for us. And then spirit-led. Oh my, if, these are, if there's any days, it's, it's vital to be spirit-led. It's these days. If there's any time that we need to hunker down and we need to go back to basics and say, Lord, I won't move until you move. Like the people of Israel in the wilderness. When, when, when the pillar of fire moved, they moved. When the pillar of cloud moved, or the, the cloud moved, they moved. When they stopped, they stopped. Let's not move ahead of God. Let's follow his lead. And that takes, that's not just about spiritual gifting. It's about discipline. It's about choosing. It's about saying, we will seek your face. 
We will seek your face for strategy. We will seek your face for direction. We will seek your face for what we're going to do next. I love a little quote from John Wimber from years ago. He said, I'm not against strategy. I'm not against planning, but only after the Holy Spirit has spoken. So let's be disciplined to seek his face. Then, as part of that, to be disciplined to listening to his voice, to take time to listen, to make listening an art. I think in much of the evangelical church, and if I'm honest, what's known as the charismatic church, we've lost the art of listening. We've lost the art, some would call it contemplation, of being still and knowing he is God, of standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. We're so, um, we're so enamoured with Mount Carmel that we spend too much time in our hearts there and not enough time on Mount Horeb. On Mount Carmel was the, was the great victory that Elijah had. But you know, straight after his victory, he went into the depths of depression. He was frightened and God took him to another mountain. If Carmel was the mountain of victory, Horeb is the mountain of encounter. And, and the Lord put uh, Elijah in the cleft of a rock and then came a great earthquake, a mighty wind and a roaring fire. But God was not in the earthquake, the wind and the fire. And I bet Elijah was especially tempted to think that God must be in the fire because God was in the fire on Mount Carmel. And the temptation is, let's just repeat what was successful last time when God says no. No, the pillar of fire has moved on, the cloud has moved on. And then came a gentle whisper, a still small voice. And that still small voice was the beginning of the answer to all of Elijah's questions. Let us spend lots of time on our Mount Horeb, on our place of encounter, that we would see more victories on the Mount Carmels that we face. So let us listen, but listening for a purpose. It's listening not just to get a word, but it's listening in order to obey. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. He also said in the same passage, you're my friends if you do what I command you. Let us be a people who will listen for the purpose of obeying and obeying because we love. Obedience is the ultimate act of worship. And as we seek to do that, and as he sees that we obey when he speaks, we will hear his voice more and more clearly. More and more clearly, we will discern what is him. But we need to still our hearts. God speaks in the stillness more than he does in the noise. That's why he takes us to desert places. I heard a, 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 a story, I can't remember where from, of a farmer who was uh, putting hay in the hay barn in the harvest time, in, in the autumn, and he filled the barn with hay. And after he finished, he realised that his watch had come off while he was putting all the hay in the hay barn. And it was one of those old-fashioned antique watches um, that you would... Um, uh, that they would have and it was given to him by his grandfather and it was one of those watches that would go tick 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 and um, uh, he lost it and it was like oh no looking for a watch in a hay barn is like looking for a needle in a haystack stack he looked for a while but he couldn't find it and then he went back to the farmhouse and as they were having dinner he said to the family hey I've lost granddad's watch in the hay barn I'll never be able to find it. His little boy, his son, maybe seven years old, said, I'll find it for you, Daddy. And the father said, how are you going to find it? It's impossible. The boy, when he finished dinner, he got off this chair, he went to the, the hay barn, and he went and he climbed all the haystacks, and he, he lay down on his back right at the top, and he lay very, very still. And as he lay still, he could after a while, only hear his heart beating. And after a while longer of lying still, slowly, in the 
in the quietness, he began to hear, tick, tick, tick. And then after a while longer, he began to discern where the ticking came from. He went and he found the watch. I love that as a picture of what it means to listen to the Lord. Take time, take time, listen to his voice. We build, we, our aim is to build an alternative kingdom community. Our theology is a kingdom theology, not a dominion theology. Our, our theology is about building an alternative kingdom. God's kingdom, the expression of the kingdom is the church. And yes, of course we're meant to be involved in politics. Yes, of course we're meant to be involved in issues of justice. But as we've seen over the last few years, when the church of Jesus gets identified with, with one political movement and sees that as, the, as the, the coming of the kingdom, oh my goodness, we get that so wrong. We get involved in politics, we get involved in society because God loves his, his world and he wants us to serve his world and be good news in the world and he wants us to feed the hungry and, and clothe the naked and give shelter to the wanderer. He wants us to be involved in his world but we're never going to, the kingdom will never come in its fullness when a political party gets in, what, what, of, whether it's the left or the right or the centre. The kingdom doesn't come when we leave the European Union and the kingdom will not come if we go back into the European Union. That's not the issue. The issue is we are an expression of the kingdom and, and the ultimate expression is the church. When people look at the church, they see this is what heaven should look like. And so we, 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 we want to build an alternative kingdom by, by our obedience, by following Jesus, by biblically, being biblically based, and also especially by being Christ-centered. And in this kingdom community, in this kingdom family, we're called to be a family that loves one another. There's only, there's only one celebrity. There's only one who is he's the one that we, we, we want to make famous, and his name is Jesus. And I say this as we live in a culture that has gone celebrity mad, celebrity crazy. We get so, we get so excited when when some celebrity becomes a Christian or someone, a Christian leader knows someone who's a celebrity. That's not it. That's not it. It's Jesus. People need to see Jesus. People need to know Jesus. And we've got to stop putting people, human beings, on pedestals because only Jesus is worthy. Only Jesus will never let us down. And I love, I love, I've been reading through We've been reading through as a church here, um, John's Gospel. And I love that, that at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, you know the famous guy was John the Baptist. It was, it was all about John the Baptist. And, and um, people came into the desert uh, in order to hear him speak. And uh, he, he actually, he grew up in the desert almost certainly because um, his parents were, 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 were very likely Nazarites, and, and he was a voice in the desert. He was a voice in the wilderness. And I've been to the deserts of Judea, and it is excruciatingly hot. It is so dry, it is so uncomfortable, that they went into the desert because there was a, a genuine voice. And we in the church, we will find our voice Instead of being an echo to be a voice, we'll find it in the desert times. And my prayer is in these days, they won't be wasted, but that we will have found our distinctive voice, not being an echo of the world around us, but having something to say, people will come. People will come as they did for John. But do you know, they wanted to put John on a pedestal and again and again and again, uh, he said, um, John testified concerning Jesus, uh, uh, John 1 verse 15, 
he cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Then later on in verse 20, he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, are you Elijah? I'm not. Are you the prophet? No. Finally, they said, come on, tell us, who are you? It's like he didn't want to tell them. It was like he wanted to say, I'm not the point. And then he replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, eventually, I'm the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. And then later on he says, I baptise with water, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me. The straps of, those sand, of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Um, and that has to be our attitude. We as the church, we point to Jesus. We live for Jesus. We love Jesus. We adore Jesus. It's all about Jesus, for Jesus, to Jesus. And let us be disciplined about not making it about anybody else. John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. I think that should be a motto for, for every leader in the church. And if I may say it and be cheeky, especially worship leaders. You know, in the age where, where if you're a worship leader, the temptation is, is to put yourself forward. No, your job, worship leaders, musicians, is to point to Jesus. Get out the way. Get out the way of him. There's only to be one celebrity. And, and th another reason why this is important is, is when, we, when we make it about celebrities, we expect them to do everything for us. And what that does is it disempowers the rest of the church. It's every member ministry. We are one body with many members. And we actually is meant to give greater honour to the weaker members. Greater honour. So we honour one another. We don't just honour the people supposedly at the top. You see, it's a whole different culture to the culture of the world. We encourage one another. We build one another up. We see the value in, in others. And then as we come into land, I'm running out of time. We, 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 we live lives of generosity. Generosity should be the hallmark of the church. Love is defined in many ways in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 13 defines it in lots of different ways. Love is kind um, and so on. But do you know what? I think the greatest definition of love, biblical love, is generosity. God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son. And this is not, this is so not, my friends, um, about, about giving to church. It's so much more than that. I'm not saying you don't give to church, but it's about living lives of generosity with our finances, with our possessions, with our homes, with, with our hearts, with our, generous with our encouragement. Do you have any idea what encouragement does to people? I've had to learn that lesson again during this lockdown. I, I love cooking. And um, I, I decided I really needed to be a bit more healthy. And I was, I was on my own in the house, so I couldn't cook for my friends easily. And then, do you know what? One day, the thought came into my mind, why don't I cook meals for my neighbours? And we just started in our road a WhatsApp group. And my first reaction was, don't be silly. They'll, you can't just go up to your neighbours and give them food. They'll, they'll be embarrassed or they won't know how to react. And when I thought about it, I realised, no, I'll be embarrassed. So, and I say this in all humility, my greatest gift is my cooking. And um, uh, especially when it comes to Greek food. And uh, there are two, my two speciality dish dishes are gleftigo. Say gleftigo. Gleftigo, that's it, which is lamb cooked in its own juices really slowly with oregano. Stunning. My other one is macaroni do forno. Say macaroni do forno. That's it. 
And, and I cooked those, so I decided I'm going to go for it. So I started cooking gleftigo and macaroni du fundo for my neighbours. And I remember when I, I knocked on my neighbours one side and I said, here's a leg of lamb for you. They looked stunned. But do you know, then I went and I said, here's some macaroni du fundo. And now I've been cooking for my neighbours up and down the street. I would just go there with bits of food and give it to them. Do you know, it's been transformational. After 20 years living in my street, I, they're all in touch with me. They ask me to pray for them, literally. Um, they're, they're, they're checking up on me. How are you doing? One of my neighbours saw I didn't have a wreath, a Christmas wreath on my front door, so she made me one. And I mean, I tell you, I walk down the road and everyone's saying hello. And it's so simple. It's so simple. Just, just to give. Give and it will be given to you. Give and it will be. Let's live lives of generosity with one another and as the church with the world outside us. I know this is stuff that we know, but it's always good to remind ourselves again. And in the end, it all comes back to... I'm sorry, guys. I know you've had some great talks from some really top leaders and mine are very simple because I'm a very simple person. This is very simple, but I hope it's not simplistic. It's about getting back to basics. Let's go for it as we look to the future, as we look to the future with the vision of the future. Let's give it everything and let's live for Jesus. God bless you, my friends. It's a privilege and a joy to be with you. Amen. Thank you, Mike, for that absolutely inspiring talk. We're so, so pleased that we've been able to share that with everybody here at North Birmingham Vineyard. And you know, it's actually come at a perfect time. We've just finished this series about creating positive identity as individuals. And now Mike's just shared with us how we can take those individual identities and become a strong, unified identity as the church, as the bride of Christ, as a body of people who are alive for a purpose. So I just am really thankful for that. I hope that it's landed with all of you as well as it has with me. And now, before we go, we're just gonna transition back into one last worship song. So please position yourselves and get ready to encounter the Lord. Never fail.
We have loved having you here with us today at North Birmingham Vineyard. It's been a great time to share with you. Trust you've really been inspired and encouraged by everything you've heard. Just want to remind you um, about a couple of things. If you want to keep in touch with us, what's happening, um, we have an e-bulletin that we send out to everybody connected. You can keep up to date on our social media. But if you want something a bit more personal contact, just simply in message us at info at mbv.org.uk and we can keep you connected you can feel a part of what's going on if you feel like you want to give um, you're appreciating what's happening here and just feel you want to make an investment um, you can go to our website there's a church giving page where you can make a donation little or great it's up to you it's just for us a continuity of worship and an expression of investment in what god is doing and immediately after the service we warmly invite you to come and join our zoom call it's a time for us to connect with each other to share communion together and jane hoy who is our um, representation champion for open doors um, will be leading us um, in a special time in that so yeah just um click on well, I don't know that they can click on actually. You need a link, so you just email us at info at mvv.org.uk. Yeah. Um, it's really for those who are being inspired by a little bit of what we shared last week about Open Doors, just to find out more, see how you can get involved. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Absolutely. We, we pray that you have a truly amazing, blessed week. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some